to have it here as, is that 334? Oh. That is a 334, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a thing. Ooh. Like, who wins this trade? Yes, nice knockback, but. Like, Ward is very unpleased. That was his full combo, like everything yeah. he could have used. Every cooldown huh? in his kit. But here he's like, what, I what? can't help you. What, what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> there it is, the mage, the wizard, the absolute 200 IQ genius. That is a Orn from two levels ahead. As we're going to take a look at the replay here, and this is definitely a bit of a chaotic team fight. So Chovy goes in, Vanguard's Edge onto Ghost. And you can see Ghost and Barrel, they take the magical journey over to the left hand side. You can see Depth trying to act as a gatekeeper and try to suffocate Dom Juan from being able to get over to Chovy. Brambleback sort of getting in on the action, blocks the Zoe bubble. And then let's take a look at this. What is it? I Is that the Tormented Soil or? I think it's just a dot finding. Okay. Wow. That's Almost a, killed Canyon yeah, as well. Yeah, but T1 with the low ground is exactly where they want to be. Warren has an upgrade of not electing to use it on anyone. Yeah, Baker's actually going to be taken down very low here. Goes golden. Gravity field is set up. Flash comes down as there's the cannon barrage, stopping a lot of this re-engage from T1. Subjugate now on cooldown as DRX are just going to move over and take this out of turret. As death rays are flying left, right, and center carrier, they're making sure the T1 aren't rotating over to this Drake. And now it looks like three members of T1 have been caught out of position. Cuz down to half health as DRX, they claim the low ground. Now it's time for T1 to find a way back in. Yeah, and you can see Kana, oh, just barely going to miss the death ray. He upgraded the Obsidian Cleaver here instead of Teddy's Molten Edge, which is a little bit surprising. They're going to go over the wall. They're going to flip. Yeah, we're looking for a 50-50 as Faker's right into the back line. Great devour from Carrier and Faker falls. Kana gets exhausted as it is going to be the Mountain Drake locked down by DRX and they claim a couple of kills. Abyssal Voyage very aggressively on top of Kuz who will get licked by Carrier and destroyed. But no, fantastic snare comes through from effort. I don't know whether it's going to be enough as Flash is forward from DRX and they are not stopping Teddy. In trouble, the Flash from Chovy, the Chaos Storm. Not enough and Teddy's going to survive. But the pings are down on the Baron. The pings are going over to the Baron and DRX managed to win a Mountain Dragon that I don't think anyone probably would have suspected them to win if you just re-round, rewinded the tape by like 45 seconds. T1 were in such a good position, but now they're the ones that cut out muscle teleports coming in to oh try to do God. something. This could but be this a should be the Baron. What? Fake is gonna dive on in and oh my oh! god, Fake is still the Baron! He's turned it immediately! Takes down the jungler as well. Carrier, no options. This is an Uber throw out of DRX, but a fantastic capitalization by T1. They and it looks like there's just lots of posturing right now, but Cloud Dragon is up. You can see that top wave. Oh yeah. Lots of value there. Faker's gonna pick up the red buff. That'll be very valuable for this team fight. Clint is level 12. He's oh, gonna be here terrible. we go, Clint. He's just so squishy, and he's gonna be first down in the back. And now, Ruler, he doesn't have a Yumi to help him out this time. His life was there in the front line, and this is absolute disaster for Gen G as immediately three of them, four of them even, are going to go down. Kana How many years? for the kill, as that took quite a while. That, uh, and Ruler Silly did. As, uh, Deft does have his crescendo, but you can see there's the bullet time as Deft is going to soak a lot of it, but not a lot of damage behind that one at the moment, but Nogri has teleported in, and now Deft just realizing that he has to try. Oh, oh my God, he's able to do it. And now Nogri, can he actually fight this one out? The answer is no. The power of a Aphelios, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, as Deft just turns it on his head. And for some reason, oh, actually, pay attention to Chobi's mouth. He's on like both from them. Wait, you want to You want to Yeah, they didn't start dragging. They didn't start dragging. Or to just get out of a sticky situation. And I hope that Chovy, he opens that book and he reads what's inside. Yeah. As I don't think there's good news inside of it. 45 seconds until Infernal Soul comes up. Baron push. Running down mid. Kana finds Chovy, gets the distortion out. Yeah, it's going to be the chains that do land, get a little bit of CC, but 
There's the cast. Doesn't really do too much, but Faker is out of position. Death Charge is going to land. Fate Score comes in, though, and Death once again going to be the target. Taken down immediately as Trovi off to the side, not able to find the chains, and Carrier is going to get burned down. And now Teddy hopping mad in the back line, looking for more. Gets himself the lifeline passive. Nails the quadra kill, and Trovi's going to be here standing <laughs> underneath his turret with his little crab emote saying, Teddy, bring it. If you want to get that uh, pentakill, you're going to need to come and take me down. But... Teddy's not interested in that. This guy just wants to get himself to the finals on Saturday, and they are going to be able to do so. Faker is looking for Chovy for that 1v1, but it's just not going to matter. Next As obviously this final comes amongst a very interesting kind of circumstance with the world currently with the pandemic, with COVID-19 and everything like that, but LCK must go on, and it has a different feel this time. You know, we're here in Lull Park, and we're bringing it to you. All the players are here right behind us. So it feels like we're finally back after casting in our houses for over a month now. So it really just feels like everything is right once again. <laughs> and we're going to have a real best of five here between these two amazing teams, by the way. The two of them just seem to be on another level from everybody else here in Korea. And we're taking a look at the... The crowd right now, as there are a lot of familiar faces. Imyo Hwan on the left right there, Slayer's Boxer, one of the most historic T1 alumni. You have Joe Marsh in the crowd, and just, I really <laughs> like what chew. they did here. Yeah, we got uh, we got a very, even Sungkae came down. He's not casting today, but he's come to support the teams. Of course, we do have lots of cardboard cutouts of a lot of the fans that did make these fan signs from their houses, of course, very safe to cheer on their favorite teams. This is the T1 side, of course, as you can probably tell. ...of the Equalizer cask, <laughs> as well as the Mount Yats. Uh, I mean, it's 1,300 something. damage. Yeah. That's silly. That's, of course, in the middle. It does 800 damage if you're not in the dead center of the Mega Inferno Bomb, guys. That's uh, that's how that one works. Uh, it's Regardless, if you're in that circle, no matter which one, you're going to be taking a hell of a lot of damage. Teddy could probably die if he's hit by the middle of it right now, but uh, Def just wants to hold on to that, uh, that artillery strike for as long as possible. Oh, oh good oh. Oh. Um, That was blind. He just put the ward down. Genji is in the finals uh, automatically, so by standards, Genji should be the, f the favorite, but I think T1 uh, is more scary than Genji because of their experience and their drafts. And they have Faker, which I, I'm a big fan of, of course, uh, as you guys might know that. Uh, so I hope that Faker wins and he says hi to me. That will be very nice. Uh, <laughs> in this lane so far, but now even Teddy's going to turn up and the Piercing Darkness is going to keep the set alive. Certainly showing the value as far as sitting underneath the turret and taking abuse just to try and keep it alive. And, well, Baker still continuing to get more. Oh my god, he just solo killed him! Underneath the turret with a pierce, Chovy! Amazing play now, Cuz out of position. Pillar is fantastic this time around, and Cuz has to flash to get out of the cataclysm. But Chovy's gonna flash forward, misses the pierce. After seeing the series, I suppose that does make sense. Gen Z is going to make one last stand. They're just gonna go for it, gonna try to land some bombs on a Teddy. Who has Severim and insane amounts of life steal? He's <laughs> nine and one right now. As he's just frontlining. I'm not sure about that one. He does have stopwatch. Can he actually get out of this? As he immediately flashes and look at the AoE damage. That should be the nail in the coffin right here. As three members though of Gen Z will be able to get away himself just in case. <laughs> Didn't want to add another death onto this one. One, one, and five looks okay for BDD, at least, in the loss. Yep, and now they're just shredding the turret. Help from yep. all the minions. There you go, the double knockup. He finds Ruler on the bottom side. Bull Bear dies, and that is going to do it. T1 are your LCK Spring 2020 champions in another 3-0 victory in the world. As T1 dominate their opponents, Gen G, it was not close and they will once again sit on the throne that is the LCK. And inside of the games. And then Gen G ended up getting bested really quickly here tonight. That they did. Uh, this, I don't think it was the fastest finals we've had amongst all the regions, but it was.